Princess Diana died in the early morning hours of September 1st, 1997, after sustaining fatal injuries in a car crash in Paris. The driver of the car, along with Diana's partner, Dodi Fayed, were also killed in the crash. Diana was only 36 years old at the time of her passing, and the news quickly spread across the globe. After a later inquest, Diana's death was ruled as an unlawful killing due to negligence. However, some have theorized that her death was the result of something much more sinister. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Laura, and today we're gonna take a deep dive into the death of Princess Diana. Thank you Atlas VPN for sponsoring this post. Atlas VPN protects all of your devices with a single subscription. And it's great because you can stop ads and malware. This is more than just a VPN. It blocks all of the malicious links, ads, trackers, and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your identity and data. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three year subscription for $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. And I love Atlas VPN because Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus all have geo restrictions due to licensing rights. This means that hundreds of exclusive shows or even the streaming services themselves may not be available to you based on your location. With Atlas VPN, you can bypass geo restrictions and access your favorite content from across the world. And I just love this. I love to see what they have in Europe, even in the United States, because I'm in Canada and there is better stuff in the United States. And the same goes if you want to access what's going on in Canada, where I live. You can watch Harry Potter film series, The Adventures, The Lord of the Rings trilogy, or an entire US Netflix library. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three year subscription for $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. And time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. And thank you, Atlas VPN, for sponsoring this post. So there have been a few moments in my life, certain days that I'll never forget, and one of them is the death of Princess Diana. I remember exactly what I was doing that day. I was just about to start a new year of school. I was watching TV with my brother, and at the bottom of the screen, a little caption came on saying that Princess Diana was in critical condition in the hospital, and I think maybe an hour later, it said that she was pronounced dead, and I just remember it being a media mayhem after that. So let's dive into the death of Princess Diana. Lady Diana Spencer was born on July 1st, 1961, to parents Edward John Spencer and Frances. Her parents would divorce when Diana was only eight years old and her father won sole custody. The Spencers were a wealthy family who had been landowners in England for centuries. Diana's family had rented an estate owned by Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Charles' mother, and Diana may have had interactions with Charles' younger brother while she lived on the estate. Charles was 13 years older than Diana, so the two hadn't spent time together when Diana was growing up. They did, however, begin to see each other after Diana moved to London in 1978. Diana had initially worked as a nanny before she worked as a kindergarten teacher. After a few years of courtship, Lady Diana Spencer married Prince Charles on July 29, 1981. Since Charles was officially the Prince of Wales, this meant that Diana now became the Princess of Wales. Diana and Charles would have two sons together. The first was Prince William, born in 1982, which is the same age as my older brother Eric, and then Prince Harry, born in 1984, and that is the year I was also born. And their marriage was anything about a fairy tale. Charles had affairs throughout their marriage, and in 1992, after a decade of marriage, the two announced their separation. They were officially divorced by 1996, a year before Diana's passing. The royals are a hotly debated concept. People either love them or hate them, but with Diana, it was impossible not to love her. She was friends with Elton John and loved music and fashion. And she was friends with so many celebrities and always seen at events. She used her name to help others by raising awareness for issues that were close to her heart. Diana advocated for AIDS-focused causes. She advocated for children and supported the move to abolish the use of landmines among many other causes. Princess Diana happened to be the guest of honor at the UK's first HIV AIDS dedicated unit in 1987, and she shook hands with a patient suffering from AIDS without gloves in front of the media in an effort to dispel the myth that the disease was transmissible through touch. 
Many credit Princess Diana for changing many members of the public's perception of the disease through actions like that. It was clear that this wasn't an act. Diana cared and she wanted to make a difference. She was a people's princess. And I think the royal family was kind of jealous of her because everyone loved her more, it seems. And Diana began a relationship with Egyptian filmmaker Ahmad Dodi Fayed once her divorce from Charles was finalized. Dodi was the son of a billionaire, Mohammed Al Fayed, who formerly owned the famous Harrods department store, as well as the Fulham FC soccer team. And Dodi's best known work was producing the film Chariots of Fire. Unfortunately for the couple who were very much in love, Diana and Dodi were relentlessly hounded by the media and could barely go anywhere together without being swarmed by the paparazzi. On the evening of August 31st, 1997, Diana and Dodi were having dinner in the Imperial Suite at the Ritz Hotel in Paris. They had stopped in Paris after flying from Sardinia and were due to be in London next. The couple had just spent the previous nine days in Dodi's father's yacht on the French and Italian Riviera. All the two wanted was a quiet meal together and there are some reports that Dodi had bought a ring for Diana earlier that day. Unfortunately, the meal was cut short and they left only after 10 minutes since the press and the other patrons of the restaurant were disturbing them. Dodi and Diana left the Ritz at 11.30 p.m. and were planning to head back to Dodi's apartment in the city. Despite using a decoy vehicle in an attempt to rid the paparazzi of them, the couple was swarmed as soon as they left the hotel. Diana and Dodi left the Ritz through the rear entrance and got into the Mercedes S280 limousine. The driver was Frenchman Henry Paul and the other person in the car was Trevor Rees Jones, a bodyguard of Diana. Henry then took off through the streets of Paris and it was later estimated that he may have been going as fast as 60 miles an hour, which is around 100 kilometers an hour. At 12.19 a.m., the limousine crashed into the 13th pillar of the Pont de Alma bridge. It had first struck the right-hand wall before swerving to the left-hand side of the carriageway and then colliding with the pillar. The car then spun a final time before coming to a stop. The damage to the car was significant with the front half in particular, being very beaten up after making contact with the wall. All four people were still in the car and the paparazzi had caught up to the crash site. Some of them had some humanity and began trying to help open the doors and assist, but others held back and cautiously took photos. And I find that so disturbing that they would still try to get that photo. The police arrived at roughly 12.30 a.m. An ambulance came five minutes after that and firefighters also arrived to help. Both Dodi and Henry Paul died on the scene. Trevor Rees Jones was still conscious but had suffered multiple injuries. Diana was also conscious at the time. She had been seated in the right rear passenger seat. Diana had suffered serious injuries, however, it was repeatedly murmuring, oh my god, oh my god. Sergeant Xavier Gormalon, who was heading up the response team that night, told the Independent that the last thing Diana said was, my god, what's happened? Diana then reportedly turned her head and saw Dodie in front of her, his lifeless body. She then looked over to the front of the vehicle and saw her bodyguard and saw Henry Paul, who was deceased. Diana became agitated before she lowered her head and closed her eyes. She then went into cardiac arrest after being removed from the vehicle. External cardio recitation was performed and her heart began to beat again. She was taken to a Paris hospital, but she passed away at 4 a.m. due to the injuries she had suffered from the crash. One of these injuries was a severed pulmonary vein. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Diana was just 36 years old, so I was so young, it's really depressing to think about. William, her son, was only 15 years old at the time and Harry was only 12. Prince Charles and Diana's older sisters arrived in Paris at around 5 p.m. that day. They visited the hospital along with the French president and thanked doctors for doing what they could to save Diana's life. Harry and William had been in Balmoral, Scotland at the time of Diana's death and Queen Elizabeth had made the decision to stay with the boys there before returning to London right before Diana's funeral. Staying in Scotland also came with not addressing the nation about Diana's death for five days after her passing and this did not go down well. And then it's very odd that she took five days. I had no idea actually because I was kind of young. One of Elizabeth's aides explained in a 2017 interview that this was primarily a family that had been struck by a personal tragedy, especially for the grandchildren of the queen. And so that was the first reaction. But I still think if you're in public, you should 
come out sooner than five days. I don't know, it seems kind of weird and suspicious. But I think that the family were somewhat slow, perhaps to recognize that the need to step forward in their public role of showing the leadership of the country and its grief about the death of a princess. I mean, I agree. I feel like that's very odd. I actually didn't realize that because I was really young. I was only 12 when it happened. But that's, I don't know, that's, that's, not, that's not sitting well with me. The Queen addressed the Morning Nation on September 9th, 1997. This would be her first live broadcast since the Gulf of War in 1991. Elizabeth started her speech off by saying, We have all felt those emotions in these last few days. So what I say to you now, as your Queen and as your Grandmother, I say from the heart. She went on to say, First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being in good times and bad. She never lost her capacity to smile, laugh, and to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. I admired and respected her for her energy and commitment to others, especially for her devotion to her two boys. The loss of Princess Diana was felt worldwide. She had become a global icon before her death and the news was beyond shocking. Over a million bouquets were left at Kensington Palace, Diana's residence. Diana's funeral was held in London soon after passing and it was estimated that one million people lined the funeral route from Kensington Palace to Westminster Abbey. Princess Diana was then buried in Northamptonshire on a small island surrounded by a lake called the Oval. This area is part of the Pleasure Garden at Althorpe. Visitors can go during the summer months and walk around the lake and see an exhibition about Diana. And let me know if you've ever gone there to visit her grave. I feel like I would love to go one day. A French investigation was conducted into the death of Diana, but the 6,000 page report was never made public. Though they did not conclude that the deaths were the result of an accident, Diana's death was initially blamed on Henry Paul driving excessively fast as a way to avoid the paparazzi, but would this new inquest have the same finding? In January of 2004, an inquest into the crash was opened. The Metropolitan Police Commissioner was asked to make inquiries in regards to the speculation about the deaths not being an accident. A forensic scientist was also commissioned to examine the forensic evidence. These findings would be handed in in December of 2006. The inquest officially began on October 2nd, 2007. The coroner for the inquest of Diana and Dodie's death was Lord Justice Scott Baker. Scott Baker had issued a list of issues that would most likely come up in the inquest on the 27th of July, 2007. The questions covered whether it had been a driver error that caused or contributed to the crash, whether Henry Paul had been impaired through drugs or alcohol, if there had been another car involved in the crash, and this was a previous claim, and if the paparazzi's actions had caused or contributed to the crash. The questions also looked into whether the construction of the tunnel was dangerous, who decided that Henry is going to drive Diana and Dodie, and if Diana may have survived if she had been taken to the hospital sooner or received any different medical care. Perhaps the most interesting questions delved deeper into Diana and Dodie's relationship. The questions were posed if Diana was pregnant, if she and Dodie had been about to announce their engagement, and more details about the ring that Dodie purchased. Six women and five men were sworn in for the inquest. Evidence presented found that Henry Paul's blood alcohol levels had been three times the legal limit in France. And that's crazy. That kind of makes sense then. He was drunk and he also had prescription antidepressants in his system, which may have worsened the effect that the alcohol had on him. Testimony was heard from people like Trevor Rees Jones, Mohammed Al Fayed, Diana's stepmother, and the former head of the M16. The inquest jury ended up finding both Henry Paul and the paparazzi that had been chasing the vehicle responsible for the crash. Diana and Dodie's death were ruled as unlawful killings. This was one of five possible conclusions, namely unlawful killing by the negligence of either or both the falling vehicles or Paul, or an accidental death or an open verdict. Sadly, it was also found that the two may have survived if they had been wearing seatbelts at the time of the crash, which they may have not been. Since Henry had also been charged in the crash, no one was charged with the death. Lord Justice Baker concluded his summing up to the jury before their verdicts were decided on by saying that there was not a shred of evidence that suggested that Diana's death had been ordered by Prince Philip or any other security services. I mean, technically, he could have ordered 
the death and got the driver to crash but then why would he want to die too so it is kind of weird i don't know what to think to be honest and since he was under the influence it's hard to say but why would he be drinking like that prince william and harry released a statement after the inquest had concluded and said that they agree with their verdicts and are both hugely grateful Mohammed said that he would accept the verdict and abandon his 10-year campaign to prove that diana and dodi were murdered in conspiracy so I don't know, I mean, if he really thought that too, there might be something to it. The French investigation found that Diana and Dodie's death was due to an accident, and the British inquest found that it had been an unlawful killing as a result of negligence. But there have also been a few conspiracy theories over the years, and one even coming from Dodie's father. In February of 1998, Mohammed Al-Fayed stated that the crash was somewhat of a conspiracy. And he later clarified that the crash had been orchestrated by M16 on behalf of the royal family. These claims had been dismissed by the French and the Operation Paget. Other theories as to why Diana may have been killed purposely include her being pregnant. Mohammed Al Fayed has stated once that the royal family could not accept that an Egyptian Muslim could eventually be the stepfather of the future King of England. But Diana's post mortem autopsy shows no sign of pregnancy. Confidants of her were also able to confirm that she hadn't mentioned anything about the possibility of being pregnant. It is fairly easy to strike that off as a possibility since they have the proof in the autopsy. The next theory is that Henry Paul, who happened to be the head of security at the Ritz, had intentionally set out to crash the vehicle that evening. And to me, there could be something to that. Maybe he intentionally drank a bunch. Some conspiracy theories offer up that Henry had been paid by an organization, this ranges from the royal family to the French, so I guess technically they could have paid him, but then if he's gonna crash it trying to kill her, then when, would he wanna kill himself as well? The focus behind this theory is that Henry wasn't drunk that night, but this was information spread by the media in an attempt to cover up the murder. This was achieved by swapping Henry's body with another body so that the toxicology report would show that the driver had been drunk. Evidence that supports this claim is the fact that Henry hadn't appeared drunk earlier that night and that he seemed to have more money than would be expected. All of the blood tests did show that Henry Paul did have a large amount of alcohol in his system at the time and these tests were certified. For those that believe in any conspiracy about Diana's death, the most common one is probably this. Diana thought she was going to be killed by the establishment. This theory actually has some concrete evidence behind it in the form of a letter written by Diana herself. Diana had written this letter to her one-time butler, Paul Burrell. Paul had kept this letter after he was given it for safekeeping. The letter read, I am sitting here at my desk today in October, longing for someone to hug me and encourage me to keep strong and hold my head high. This particular phase of my life is the most dangerous. Someone is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for Charles to marry. These feelings of Diana would be unfounded. At the time, she had experienced problems with her car, which is very interesting, and a bodyguard of hers died in an accident that Diana found very suspicious. So that, to me, seems like there's something going on here. Clearly, Diana was concerned about her safety, but the step further pointing to a reason as to why someone would have her killed hasn't been presented with any evidence that backs it up. Operation Paget was the name given to the British Metropolitan Police Inquiry that was put together in 2004 with the purpose of investigating the conspiracy theories around Diana's death. The inquiry was concluded after the British inquest in 2008 with the jury's verdict of an unlawful killing. Princess Diana has been credited for modernizing the royal family in regards to relations with the public. Both Prince William and Harry have given credit to their mother for their own charitable efforts. In the bombshell Oprah interview that came out in 2021, Harry opened up for the first time about how Charles, his father, had handled Diana's passing. And he said, My father used to say to me when I was younger, he used to say to both William and I, Well, it was like that for me, so it's going to be like that for you, Harry recalled. He went on to say, That doesn't make sense. Just because you suffered doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer too. In fact, quite the opposite. If you suffered, do everything you can to make it sure that your kids don't suffer as well. 
So it seems kind of weird that he would just chalk it up as too bad, you have to suffer. So he, in many ways, he should have made it right for his kids. So that seems crazy to me. I don't know, after watching The Crown, I'm not a fan of Charles, to be honest, or Prince Philip. I mean, it's hard to say it was a queen because I know she's under immense pressure all the time, but I feel like the royal family it does have more power than anyone and money, so if they wanted to, they could cover this up and we'll never know. I'm just saying that, I mean, I don't know. It's weird that she never said anything for five days. There's other weird stuff going on in the royal family too, so I don't know. I just, I don't know what to think. I do know that I have a feeling that they were jealous of Princess Diana, even when she was married to Prince Charles. I feel like they were always jealous of her because everyone loved her. She was a people's princess. She got all the media attention and quite frankly, I don't think anyone really ever liked Charles. I'm not saying he's like a horrible person, but I'm just saying that a part of me kind of always wonders. I don't know, it just seems kind of suspicious to me, but I feel like the royal family has the ability to cover things up. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Do you think there's any conspiracies behind this or do you believe things at face value? I don't know. I just I have a hard time just believing the media and chalking it up to, oh, that it was a paparazzi. Anyways, let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and thank you all my new members who joined. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.